Hello again chaps and chapettes, how are we all doing? It's very nice to see you all again as always. You can always tell when the general election is just around the corner guys by the tweets that both parties send, especially around this time of year. Both the Tories and the Labour Party have been sending out specific tweets, more or less both the same. The first one comes from the Labour Party. Ramadan Nubarak from everyone at the Labour Party. We wish you and your families a peaceful Ramadan. Okay, fair dues. And now we have our future Prime Minister, Sir Keir Starmer. Dear God, help us all. As Ramadan begins, sending my best wishes to Muslims in the UK and around the world. You make a tremendous contribution to our nation. <laughs> I'll be getting back to that heavily, very, very shortly. At this time of prayer, reflection and charitable giving, I thank you and wish you the very best for this month. Ramadan, new barak. Now, like I say, the Tories sent out more or less the same sort of tweets, but I'm not going to concentrate on the Tories. They're gone, they're finished, they self emulated long ago. I'm going to be concentrating on our future government. Love it or hate it, that is the fact. They are going to form the next government and Keir Starmer is going to get his flabby ass into number 10 next dark day for the country indeed but what i want to get back to is uh, you make a tremendous contribution to our nation yeah i suppose they do what uh, corner shops i suppose convenience uh curries that's all i've got off the top of me i can't think of any others but i have compiled a list of the other contributions that uh people have made to this nation over the years so if you indulge me i would like to go through it with you it is quite a lengthy list so feel free to skip on if you can't be asked listening to it so for starters 2005 7th of july 7 7 central london bombings conducted by four separate islamist extremist suicide bombers which targeted civilians using the public transport system during the morning rush hour Three bombs were detonated onto three separate trains on the London Underground and one on a double-decker bus. As well as the suicide bombers, 52 other people were killed and around 700 more were injured. It was the UK's worst terrorist incident since the 1988 Lockerbie bombing and the first Islamic suicide attack in the country. Contribution 2007, 30th of June Two Islamist terrorists drove a Jeep Cherokee loaded with propane canisters into the glass doors of the, Glas of the Glasgow Airport Terminal. Setting it ablaze, five people were injured and the only deaths were that of the perpetrators, who later died in hospital from his injuries. It was also the first terrorist attack to take place in Scotland since the Lockerbie bombing in 1988. Contribution 2010, 14th of May MP Stephen Timms was stabbed during a constituency surgery by Rashara Chowdhury, a British Islamic extremist in an attempt to kill him. She was found guilty and attempted murder of attempted murder and jailed for life with a minimum term of 15 years. Chowdhury was the first Al-Qaeda sympathiser to attempt an assassination in Britain. Contribution 2013, 22nd of May, a British soldier, Lee Rigby, was murdered in an, in an attack in Woolwich by Michael Adjabur and Mike, the two Michaels. Two Islamist extremists armed with a handgun, knives and a cleaver. Both men were sentenced to life imprisonment with Adjabur given a whole life order and Adjabur ordered to serve at least 45 years. Contribution. 2017, 22nd of March. Westminster attack. Khalid Massoud, a 52-year-old Islamist, drove a car into pedestrians on Westminster Bridge, killing three and injuring almost 50, one of whom died two weeks later. He ran in into the ground of the Palace of Westminster and fatally stabbed police officer Keith Palmer before being shot dead by police. The attack was treated as an act of terrorism motivated by Islamic extremism. Contribution 2017, 22nd of May, Manchester Arena bombing. An Islamist suicider, 22-year-old Salman Aldi, blew himself up at Manchester Arena as people were leaving an Ariana Grande concert, killing 22 and injuring 139. It became the deadliest terrorist attack in Britain since the 7-7 London bombing in 2005. 
Many of the victims were children or teenagers, the youngest being an eight-year-old girl. Contribution. 2017, 3rd of June. 2017, London Bridge attack. Three Islamists drove a van into pedestrians on London Bridge before stabbing people in and around pubs in nearby Borough Market. Eight people were killed and at least 48 wounded. The attackers were shot dead by police eight minutes after the incident was reported. All three were wearing fake suicide masks and fake suicide vests. Contribution. 2017, September 5th. September 15th. Parsons Green bombing. The London tube train was, t was targeted and witnesses reported a flash and bang. 30 people were injured, mostly with flash, bur flash burns and crush injuries. But there were no fatalities. The threat level was raised to its highest point of critical soon after. Ahmed Hassan, who committed the bombing, received a life sentence with a minimum term of 34 years. Contribution. 2018, 14th of August, 2018. Westminster car attack. A Ford Fiesta ran down pedestrians outside the Palace of Westminster. The car then went on to crash into the security barrier after aiming at two police officers. Sally Qatar, who carried out the attack, received a life sentence with a minimum term of 15 years. Contribution. 2018, 31st of December. Madi Madoud, a Dutch national from Somali family, stepped, stabbed three in a knife attack at Manchester Victoria Station. Mahmoud shouted Alwa Akbar and long live the caliphate during the attack despite suffering from paranoid schizophrenia, of course he did. Mahmoud was convicted for a terrorist offence and attempted murder of three people due to his possession of significant amounts of extremist material and the, attack, and the attack's expansive planning. Contribution, 2019, 29th of November. London Bridge Stabbing. On the 29th of November 2019, police were called to a stabbing near London Bridge in central London, England at 1.58pm. A statement said that the one man was detained and a number of people were injured. Two people were killed in the attack and three were left injured. The attacker, 28-year-old Usman Khan, was shot dead by police and confirmed dead on the scene. Contribution. 2020. We're almost finished. 9th of January, two inmates at Whitmore Prison in Cambridgeshire wearing realistic fake suicide vests and carrying improvised bladed weapons stabbed one prison officer and several, ti several times causing serious injuries and harming several others. One of the inmates, Muslim convert Ziamani from Camberwell, South East London, had been jailed for 22 years for hatching a plot to behead a UK soldier inspired by the murder of Fusilier Lee Rigby. Contribution. 2020, 2nd of February, Stratham stabbing. Sudij Ahmed, wearing a fake suicide vest, similar to the one used in 2019 London Bridge stabbing, was shot dead by armed police after stabbing and injuring two people in Stratham, London Borough of Lambeth. One of the victims sustained life-threatening injuries. Contribution, 2020. 20th of June, Reading stabbing. On 20th of June 2020, Kalira Sadila shouted Allah Akbar, attacking two groups of people socialising in Formby Gardens, a public park in the centre of Reading, killing three men, injuring three others. On 11th of January 2021, he was sentenced to life imprisonment without possibility of parole. The sentencing judge, Mr Justice Sweeney, said that it was a terrorist attack and that the purpose was to advance an extremist Islamic cause. Contribution. 2001, 15th of October, murder of David Amis. Ali Harbi Ali stabbed Sir David Amis at his constituency surgery and was sentenced to life imprisonment for a whole life term. 2021, 14th of November, Liverpool Women's Hospital bombing. Imad al Swalini, carrying a homemade bomb, arrived at Liverpool Women's Hospital by taxi. The bomb exploded, killing him and injuring the driver. The incident was quickly described as terrorist. So, to wrap this up, I suppose, I'm going to be a little bit naive, a little bit foolish, maybe, a little bit stupid, and I'm going to say that this country does not need contributions of this sort of magnitude. Do you agree? We haven't had them for hundreds of years prior, and we certainly don't need them now. So I say to the Labour Party and Keir Starmer, 
stop gushing over the muslin voter base. You don't need it. You're going to get into power anyway. Keir Starmer, you're going to have your four or five years in 10 Downing Street because your average Joe on the British street can't see past his own nose or the two-party tier system that this country has. Labour's shit, vote Tory. Tory shit, vote Labour. That's the way it's been for a long time. People can't see that other parties do actually exist. And that's why it's always been Labour Tory, Labour Tory, Labour Tory. No matter how much shit or how deep into the shit we get plunged by each of these parties, people will continue to vote for them. So, one more point, Keir Starmer. Remember, a lot of people have lost loved ones and family members in these incidents. Maybe take them into consideration the next time you tweet. That's it from me, guys. Thanks very much for watching. And I'll see you again soon.